Good morning. Hi, this is David Payne, and I am the uh, co-founder and uh, and president of MyGadig, which is a, a nonprofit organization, and uh, and uh, the 9/11 Day Observance. And uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome you all this this morning or this afternoon, wherever you're at. And hopefully, uh, those of you that are on the East Coast are braving the uh, the storm that's coming in. Uh, uh, I wish you the best. Uh, I would like to spend uh, today, um, this morning, talking a little bit about uh, the 9-11 day observance, uh, the history of it, uh, some of the key elements of it, and then also talk about the education program and really sort of dive deeply into that as much as possible. And I'll, I'll try to cover this over the next sort of 30 to 45 minutes or so so that uh, there's an opportunity to leave uh, time for questions. So. Uh, uh, throughout the process, if there's any kind of technical problems, uh, go ahead and uh, use the chat feature to, to let our producer know, um, Marcus, know that there's any, you know, that there are issues or anything like that, and and uh, and he'll let me know. So uh, otherwise, uh, why don't we get started? Uh, as you can see here, hopefully you're all sort of beginning the presentation with a sort of a collage of imagery uh, that was taken from uh, a lot of our activities over the last two years. Um, by way of history, uh, this got started back in 2002, uh, right after the 9-11 attacks. Uh, uh, a good friend of mine, Jay Winnick, uh, had, had, someone I had worked with for many, many years in New York, had lost his brother, uh, Glenn Winnick, in the 9-11 attacks. Glenn was a, a volunteer firefighter and a, uh, uh, an attorney who worked downtown. He was right across the street. And of course, as you might imagine, when the towers were struck, being a volunteer firefighter and a rescue EMT, he raced into the South Tower, and unfortunately, Glenn was killed uh, along with nearly 3,000 other people when the South Tower collapsed. In his case, uh, and uh, they found his remains about six months later with a barbed medical kit by his side. And Jay's family was one of only 40 percent of the 9/11 families that received any remains at all. Uh, and uh, because I was close to Jay and his family. Uh, and I called him shortly afterwards, of course, both to express my sorrow, but uh, a little bit later to begin to talk to him about how we could pay tribute to Glenn, as well as the many other uh, uh, victims of the 9-11 attacks, both in New York and in Washington, D.C., at the Pentagon and in Shanksville, the individuals that were on the United Flight 93. Um, and then working with Jay and uh, other 9-11 family members and relatives, including Alice Hoagland, uh, who was a, a great leader of the families of those lost on Flight 93? Um, uh, just as a quick, uh, you know, sort of uh, diversion here. Her her son was uh, Mark Bingham. He was one of the four passengers that stormed the cockpit on uh, Flight 93 and helped bring that plane down before it was, you know, before it hit its intended target in Washington D.C., which supposedly was the Capitol building. So uh, uh, Mark was quite a hero along with all the passengers of Flight 93. So. Alice and Jay and I and others then got together and we created this small nonprofit groups group uh, originally called One Day's Pay, believe it or not, it wasn't even my good deed. Uh, and the idea was to encourage people to pay tribute on the anniversary of 9/11 each year by uh, doing good deeds, by helping one another. Um, uh, and a few years later, we changed it to My Good Deed, the name of the charity, because people thought one day's payment, you know, like a donation of wages or, or your salary. So we wanted to kind of correct that. Uh, and over, you know, the first three or four years, of course, you know, it grew slowly, but every year we had a few more people. I think the first year we had about 10,000 people that came to our website. Uh, and post good deeds, and then it got to about 25,000 and 50,000, and 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 now you know we have usually more than a vi million visits that that uh, hit our website every year with oh you know over close to a quarter million people that are posting good deeds and sharing their their plans for 9/11. So it's grown dramatically, and the big sort of um, sort of turning point for us was in 2009 when uh, when uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats together, one of the rare times when they did anything together, they, they introduced legislation in Congress to establish September 11th as a National Day of Service and Remembrance. And it was part of the Serve America Act, which was meant to provide support to lots of national volunteer service initiatives, with 9-11 being one of a number of important projects at the time. And, 
and well, we signed it to law uh, in the spring of 2009, which officially made September 11th a nationally recognized day of service and remembrance. And it was really only the, it still is only the second uh, day uh, on, the, uh, on the national calendar that is federally recognized in this way, Martin Luther King Day being the other. Of course, that is a, a, a day off. Uh, September 11th uh, is, is, is not uh, you know, a holiday or anything like that. It was never a goal of ours to actually have it become uh, a day of service where people would actually take the day off. You know, we wanted to make sure that it, it didn't become a, a time when people would barbecue and you know, go shopping and that sort of thing. So we wanted it to always be a voluntary day when people would just get out and make a difference and help one another. So 2009 was a very, very important year for us. That was really the breakthrough. Uh, we then uh, organized uh, a historic effort to, uh, to get, engage as many people as we could to observe 9-11, the 10-year anniversary, which was 2011, uh, as the single largest day of charitable service in U.S. history. We exceeded in doing that. We had more than 30 million people all around the country, and in fact, people from 165 nations participate in observing 9-11 in this sort of constructive, positive way. Uh, and so 2012, last year, or this year, uh, was also a very, very successful of, uh, of observance as well. We had over 10 million people participate by our preliminary estimates. We're still researching that. But one of the things I did want to emphasize and why I think this particular uh, webinar is so important is that we're getting so much support from the education community, from teachers, students, um, administrators, and their parents. Where it's sort of this idea of, of, of observing 9-11 in a positive way where we help one another. I think a lot of teachers see that as a wonderful learning experience, which it is. Uh, and, and for us, it's particularly important because we want future generations to not just uh, remember and learn about the tragedy that happened, which for us is the legacy that the terrorists left. We also want them to, to learn about the remarkable way in which the country came to, together, the spirit of unity and compassion that we all shared right after the 9-11 attacks. Um, so, so this idea of sort of teaching children about 9-12 as well as 9-11 really became a very big part of our program. Uh, in 2009, uh, we launched our education program for the first time where we started providing free lesson plans to teachers. In 2010 and 2011, we continued to expand that offering. So I'd like to talk about that um, uh, today and tell you a little bit more about uh, the elements and how you can participate and get involved. So that's a little bit about the history and our vision is to just firmly establish September 11th is this extraordinarily powerful annual event in which millions of people, young and old, take time out to help others in need, you know, however they may want to do that. And it's entirely up to them. Uh, they can help a friend, a relative, or a neighbor. They can engage in some letter writing campaign. They can make a donation to a charity. They can participate in planting a garden in the community. It's really just all about uh, individuals deciding for themselves how they want to pay tribute with some positive action or activity. Um, just a little bit more about the research that we've conducted over the last couple of years. And this relates to the 10-year anniversary. Uh, last year, we, didn't, you know, we haven't completed our research for this year yet. Um, but um, as you'll see, uh, based on this chart, altogether there are about 80 million Americans that observed September 11th in what they defined as some special way, with about 50 million of those engaging in uh, prayer and private forms of remembrance or uh, commemorative ceremonies and activities like that. Uh, but remarkably, 33% engaged in some form of charitable work or charitable activity. And we were really excited about that because as you know, a member of the 9-11 community, uh, 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 anyone you know, who lost a loved one would, you know, is, is most interested in making sure that the country will forever remember their lost loved ones. And, and they want to see something positive come from the day. And really, that's what it really comes down to. They just want to make sure that something good happens. So the idea that the, the, sort of the, the, the legacy or the ritual of 9-11 is beginning to evolve so that it's not just about prayer and remembrance, which the family members feel will ultimately diminish over time. Uh, and, and it's becoming one of getting out, doing something good, helping others in need, 
that's very exciting for them because I think they feel that that is something the country can get behind for generations to come. And it's a wonderful way to teach future generations, future, you know, our, our children and their children and their children uh, about 9-11 in a way that isn't necessarily frightening and in a way that ensures that uh, the memories of those that uh, of, of those lost, the, the events of the day, will never be forgotten. So this is really a remarkable statistic, and we're, we do anticipate that while you know this year probably wasn't as big as the 10-year anniversary, we're still seeing remarkable levels of participation uh, across the country, uh, all 50 states. These are some of the images that that uh, we took from our event. This was a, an event we had in Washington D.C. Uh, we actually brought Republicans and Democrats together uh, for uh, the stitching of a flag that had been damaged uh, in the uh, Ground Zero attacks, uh, and it was part of a 50-state uh, tour, uh, and we brought it to Washington, D.C. to help kick off our campaign. Uh, we also had a huge event in Times Square uh, in partnership with the Broadway League. We had over 10,000 people there that were helping to rally the city and the nation to support this idea of making a difference on 9-11. And then we've even started to use kiosks and other sort of new technologies as a way to make it easy for people to get involved. I'm very excited um, to say that when the 9-11 Museum opens up at the Memorial in New York, uh, and as you probably know, there was a delay in the construction and completion of the museum, but anticipating that that will be completed soon over the next year or two that there will actually be opportunities for people to post their what we call I wills or what they will do for 9-11 at the museum. So uh, uh, we're excited about the idea that this, this sort of little idea is, is becoming so much a big part of how we all are going to be observing 9-11 moving forward. This sort of gives you an idea of uh, the nationwide participation and support for the day in general. Uh, the day, you know, in, in terms of helping others. And you can see that it really doesn't matter whether you lived in the East Coast or not. You could live in the western portion of the United States or even the South, uh, or Midwest. It doesn't really matter. Uh, a, you know, a full, you know, third to 40 percent of the country, uh, you know, is participating in this observance, uh, which is really remarkable. Or well, let's put it this way, the people that participated came from uh, many different regions of the nation. That's a more accurate way of putting that. Uh, and this is uh, an interesting um, chart that I thought I'd share, indicating that about a third uh, of the people who, you know, that who, who participated describe themselves as individuals who rarely, if ever, volunteer. And, and that is very different compared to other sort of days of service, say like Make a Difference Day and programs like that. While they're wonderful and helpful, um, oftentimes they attract people who tend to volunteer anyway. But because of the power and impact that 9-11 had uh, on all of us, uh, we're finding that a good percentage of the people that are, that are involved in observing the day are individuals who normally don't get out and serve. So this is a wonderful um, opportunity to get parents who might not normally be involved in your classroom or in your school to, to get engaged in some project with your students because 9-11 will be the kind of event that will draw them in, that will motivate them to do something with you. So it's something very, very important to consider. As you may know or may have seen, we, we run and have run over the last two years uh, a national public awareness sort of campaign, a PSA campaign, as it's called. And the theme is I will, which is what will you do on 9-11, I will. And we uh, unveiled the campaign last year for the 10-year anniversary, and it, in, it included both celebrities and everyday people from all around the country sort of saying what they remember about 9-11 and what they will do. And then we carried that campaign forward again this year. We had over $10 million in donated media from you know, all the major networks, ABC, NBC, uh, Fox, um, uh, Viacom, and others, airing our PSAs, which really um, in, in together, has, together has helped us substantially increase awareness of this observance, uh, which was only about 8% at the, at the start of the 10-year anniversary campaign in June, and now is close to 30%. So we've done very well in getting more and more Americans to be aware of it. What we've learned is that if they become aware that 9-11 is a day of doing good deeds, they're three times as likely to participate in some activities. So, for us, a lot of it is just building awareness like we're doing here, encouraging people to get involved in this campaign, uh, encouraging teachers to share this with their students and inspire them to get involved as well. 
We also have had a very powerful social media effort underway as well. Uh, you know, we have a very strong Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash 911 gay. You can go there, like our page. You know, you can post uh, information, good deeds, share, uh, you know, uh, share and comment on, on different things that other people are doing as well. Uh, and if you want to go and see the PSA um, uh, ad, you can go to 911day.org and you'll see it right. Um, uh, you, there's a little video window at the very top of the home page and you can just click on that and you'll be able to uh, watch the, uh, the video that we put together. We actually have six or seven and that's sort of I think a 60 or 90 minute one. Uh, also there you'll see uh, individual videos that um, more than 40 celebrities have shared with us. Everybody from uh, Olympic gold medalists to Dr. Oz uh, to 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 uh, you know professional athletes and actors and actresses and musicians and uh, they're all sort of talking about um, you know what they remember on 9/11 and what they plan to do, like John Krasinski of The Office or Deborah Messing from Will and Grace, uh, uh, Juliana Margulies from The Good Wife, uh, Tony Hawk, who's a Who's a skateboarder? So a lot of diversity in terms of these great videos, and they're, they're, they in and of themselves are great educational tools and resources to take a look at. This is our uh, website, uh, 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 which is uh, 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 again 911day.org. Uh, you'll see again that uh, there's a big sort of uh, play button there that'll that'll get you started uh, watching the video, and then you'll see the the different videos of all the celebrities that are all um, sort of outlined there. Uh, and, and it's a great site. We just launched it this year. It's got a lot of great resources. I'll show a couple, a couple of the key ones here. Uh, uh, if you scroll down on our site, and that's how it actually works, it's sort of up and down so you can scroll all the way to the bottom. About midway through the site, you'll run into what is called our tribute quilt. And this is where uh, your students or where your class or where you as an individual can share what you will do for 9-11, whatever good deed it is that inspires you. And you can share that on our, our site and then it will appear in our quilt. Uh, and what's wonderful about it is that uh, you can also dedicate uh, your good deed to a 9-11 victim by name or to another hero in your community. You can just type in the name of a person or they can randomly assign or our you know, technology will randomly assign to you the name of a 9-11 victim if you don't know one. And the result of this effort is that we already have more than 10,000 good deeds that have been dedicated to 9-11 victims by name. Our hope is that uh, over the next two years we'll be able to create sort of a private what we'll call family room, a place where the, the relatives of those lost will be able to go and actually read the good deeds that have been posted um, in dedication to those that they lost. So it's, a, uh, it's really, a, again, a wonderful teaching tool and a great way to kind of express your, your support for 9-11 Day and pay tribute. Uh, the next slide uh, sort of shows, the, and then this is below that, it shows where you can get um, resources for uh, educational purposes or if you, you know, if you also participate in a nonprofit, uh, there are toolkits, how-to guides. So if you're an employer, a nonprofit, a faith organization provides quite a lot of detail on how to participate in 9-11 Day, suggested project ideas, same thing for teachers, for schools. Uh, the middle section view the teaching kit includes uh, six different lesson plans as well as a teacher's guide. Uh, parents uh, instructional guide and even uh, on the right hand side uh, you know, when you get to it, a letter to administrators to sort of explain the program if, if you want to help bring it to your administrative leaders or if you're an administrator yourself. Uh, we also have a lot of great uh, uh, I will assets video, uh, video clips, uh, logos, other types of tools that you can use for your own materials if you want to kind of create and build something. So the site is generally a great resource. Now we've also created a totally separate set of um, tools uh, for teachers through Scholastic and I'll, I want to talk a little bit about that in just a second. These are some of the imagery that we took uh, in Times Square this year. We had um, uh, quite a number of companies dedicate their billboards to us. Uh, so we were running a whole billboard campaign. Uh, we actually ended up getting <laughs> a number of characters from the Toys R Us store show up 
and participate with us. And then we had what we call the I Will sculpture there. We unveiled it for the first time uh, in Times Square. We also had it on tour throughout New York City uh, leading up to 9-11. And this is sort of a place where an individual stands in the I spot and they become sort of the I in the I Will. And then we took pictures of them and they took pictures of themselves. And uh, for a period of time, we were actually projecting these images up on the billboards in Times Square. Uh, and then we were encouraging all of them to post these photos uh, on their Facebook pages and, and thousands of people did that. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see just another picture sort of what the I Will sculpture looks like. We are hoping to bring this, um, this sculpture to many other cities next year, maybe even to some schools. We're talking about a, a campaign to try to promote sort of I Will awareness in this, in this fashion. It's kind of a neat, neat item. It may even be on display at the Smithsonian. We're working on that. Uh, and then here's an example of the billboard, the next slide, that sort of shows how we presented people uh, uh, in Times Square. Uh, this next slide sort of shows you what happened uh, with our Facebook page. We now are over 330,000 fans. Uh, uh, we had 45,000 likes just in one day alone on 9-11. Uh, so it's really remarkable the amount of social media support that we uh, have been getting around the campaign, and that was true for Twitter as well. Uh, I picked a couple of examples of, on the next slide, uh, two well-known um, performers, both Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato, uh, who I'm, I'm sure a lot of, if, you, if you're an elementary or junior high school teacher, you probably know how important these two people are to your students. And uh, when they posted uh, a message about I will, uh, the response was ridiculous. So take Selena Gomez, for example, when she posted her I will about uh, you know, on 9-11, there were over 211,000 likes just in the span of about two hours. So it was really, really remarkable uh, how important social media has been and is to our campaign. Uh, and this is what happened on Twitter. The next slide, you'll see that uh, the at 911 day, and I have also the sort of the hashtag I will, uh, ended up spreading all across the country and all across the world, uh, 165 countries. And the result of it was we were the number one trending topic on Twitter worldwide. So it was really remarkable what social media did do for us this past year. Um, a big part of our campaign, as you might imagine, are volunteer projects. And there are many that we conduct, and then there are thousands and thousands of ones that are put on by by schools, by students, by organizations, by employers. Uh, this happened to be a project in New York at a, at a public school where both students and teachers came together last year with parents and they helped to repaint and refurbish the school. We had so many projects like this. And this is a great picture of a little girl painting uh, the mural um, uh, as part of the playground uh, uh, revitalization effort. Uh, the next slide sort of shows a park cleanup project that we also were um, um, responsible for helping to manage. Um, the next slide is just a volunteer project uh, that, um, that actually was at the same school uh, where Target was uh, remaking an entire library. It was in the Bronx. And we had a, a lot of volunteers come together. And they did crafts projects with some of the kids. Uh, and it was really remarkable that when you do this on 9-11, it has a substantially, you know, substantial effect on the school. It motivates pretty much everybody. It, 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 it combines two really wonderful things, this idea of remembering and paying tribute with making a difference and, and helping the school itself. Uh, so the next slide sort of talks about the education program itself, both what we did this year and what we'll be doing in 2013. And what I wanted to do was focus mostly on the, um, the scholastic program and some of the resources that we've made available to, to educators this year, and, and then sort of talk a little bit, little bit about what we're going to do next year and what our plans are for 2013. So the first slide here, uh, the next one, shows sort of the, um, the principal elements of the scholastic program. We've had a partnership with Scholastic that, you know, fortunately we've been able to help get funded by American Express Company, their foundation target. Corporations Foundation and, and GlaxoSmithKline. They've been our partner on this program now for three years. Uh, 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 you can still go there today and, and download these lesson plans uh, even now if you go to scholastic.com forward slash 911 day. 
And you'll see that the, the, the site is divided into sort of three sections. Uh, there's a section for teachers, one for families, and one for administrators, and each section has different information. When you click on it, you'll be prompted to sign up. Uh, please feel free to do so. We promise we won't spam you or anything like that. Uh, so go ahead and, and, and sign up. You know, we don't share your information with any of the sponsors, so you won't start getting you know, mailers from any you know, corporations or anything like that. It's entirely so that we can continue to communicate with you and let you know what's going on and what our plans are for the future. So when you go there and once you clicked on, say, the um, you know, get lesson plans, you would run into some of these other screens that you'll see here on this slide. Uh, uh, you'll see that um, the one that says remember the 9-11 spirit of service, it, it provides a list of all the items that are available to you. These are all free. When you click on the lesson plans, then you'll see six different plans that will be uh, that are presently available, uh, all sort of met for different age groups. If you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see that there, there's an imagery of all the different ones that we have here. Uh, E-Day is about recycling consumer electronics. Uh, Creative Cultures is really a, a really interesting one about trying to better understand people of different faiths and cultures, promoting interfaith and intercultural uh, understanding. Uh, the Giving Garden is obviously about helping to plant or maintain a community or school garden. Uh, Your Beautiful is really about um, uh, a, a beautification project at the school, usually somehow related to art or, or painting a, a mural or building a mosaic, uh, some, some art element. Uh, food Rescue is about uh, finding ways to support local um, uh, food pantries uh, and, and, and uh, and then a whole way of heroes is really about uh, recognizing heroes that might be within our own midst. Well, that could be uh, family members or, or parents or, or, um, or firefighters or police officers or military veterans, people in, in our community. And of course, you know, every single one of these somehow or another is linked back to um, sort of this idea of all of us um, coming together in the spirit of unity, the idea of helping each other. Uh, that, uh, that uh, surfaced in the immediate aftermath of the 9-11 attack. So there's a lot of great lesson plans that we have now. Uh, we are planning to introduce a bunch of new ones uh, for 2013. Our intention is to have some sort of a competitive opportunity for teachers to suggest their own lesson plans to us. And we might pick a series of those and then there might be um, prizes that the, uh, the class or the school will receive, the teacher will receive uh, for those uh, plans that are selected. We're still working on that, so stay tuned. It's another reason to sign up because it will be, you know, make it easier for us to let you know what's happening. So on the next one, you'll see uh, some of the other resources that also appear on our website. So if you go to our website, 911day.org, and you click on the, the, the you know, lesson, lessons and tools section of it, uh, you'll see that there's a page there, which is this middle one here on this slide, and down below you'll see useful links. So I, I grabbed a couple of them. The, the one on the top is the Four Action Initiative. So this was a, an effort uh, um, that came out of the New Jersey school system and teachers there in partnership with nonprofits, and they created some extraordinary lesson plans to help inspire students to understand about 9-11 in constructive ways and to participate in service. So it's a, it's a terrific place to go. The 4-Action Initiative is a wonderful resource. Uh, also, of course, the 9-11 Memorial, which is one of our most important partners. They have an outstanding uh, education resource as well. There are quite a lot of other groups that uh, we feature there and we're adding new ones all the time. So uh, even if um, you know, even if you don't find exactly what you're looking for in terms of our lesson plans, the ones we've created, you're probably going to be able to find good ideas just if you come to our site and look around um, in, um, and see what our, our partners are, are providing as well. Uh, at the next slide, I wanted to just show you um, uh, some imagery of the, of the poster that was created in partnership with us and the federal government. You might be familiar with the group called the Corporation for National and Community Service. They're a federal agency that, that funds all sorts of important volunteer service programs all around the country, and they helped us this year by, by helping to uh, uh, produce uh, 10,000 posters that went to Title I schools, 
uh, and these of course were posted usually in faculty lounges and places like that, and they provided uh, lesson plan information. So uh, even if you uh, weren't able to get to our site and download it in some places, uh, we had posters and other ways to, to reach out and, and provide information to some of the teachers in schools. And then uh, the, the next slide sort of shows some of the, the pictures that were, I just grabbed a few of these, just some of the pictures and uh, imagery that came from uh, teachers this year. And by the way, if any of you did um, you know, run 9-11 related uh, projects and activities that involve some form of charitable activity or good deed, send them to me. And our email is info at 911day.org. So that's info at 911day.org. And so these were some of the images. You see that there was one class that had all, all of the students write little cards sort of saying what they will do. So I will wash my neighbor's truck. You know, I will clean my house. You know, it's really fun when you see uh, a lot of the students on, on our website posting all the good deeds, how they're going to make their bed for the day. And, and again, it's just a, a very inspiring thing to see that happen. So um, uh, these are just some of the pictures. Uh, again, children bake cookies. They delivered them to fire stations. It was really, really remarkable. Uh, the next one then talks about a pilot that we launched this year and we're hoping to expand in 2013. We uh, hosted a, a town hall meeting where we went to a high school in Long Island and we brought 9-11 uh, uh, relatives uh, 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 to speak to them about how they overcame tragedy. And in every case, these were very inspiring people who had started remarkable charities that have, uh, have dealt with po poverty, have, have created uh, uh, you know, health clinics, and provided uh, refugee assistance. To, to, to individuals you know, in Africa and in Latin America, really remarkable people who you know, lost people in 9-11 but didn't let, them, didn't let that defeat their spirit of helping one another. So they, uh, they came and they spoke to these students about 9-11. They did it in the spring. Uh, and this was in 2011 actually. In the spring and in, in, 2000, um, in the fall, these very same students, if you go to the next slide, uh, actually on their own decided they were going to do a 9-11 project and they got 25, they raised $25,000 by doing a walk uh, in, in Jericho, Long Island and they got um, something like 8,000 people from the community to come together and, and participate with them in doing good deeds on 9-11, all inspired by what they had learned um, you know, at the school. And it wasn't something we'd asked them to do, they just did it on their own. And, and this is sort of the idea of what this program is about, encouraging students to kind of be inspired to come up with their own ideas. Uh, I was in a classroom in New Jersey a couple of years ago, and these were only, you know, these were like nine, ten-year-old children, and they, of course, they were too young to remember 9-11, but they understood sort of intuitively what this was about, this idea of paying tribute by helping others. And then the teacher, you know, then broke them into groups and they all got together and brainstormed different ways in which they could raise money for a charity of the, their own choice. And these students picked Alex's lemonade stand because a, um, a student of theirs had, um, uh, you know, a fellow student of theirs had developed a brain tumor and fortunately, you know, it was benign and the, the child survived, but they decided it would be helpful to raise money for that particular charity. And so they, they all brainstormed bake sales and all sorts of different things. They had a fair and, um, yeah, and, and, um, and a garage sale and they raised about 250 bucks for, for charity. And these were, you know, again, nine, ten year olds just sort of understanding the essence of the, of, of the day. Um, so the next one just is sort of where we're going with uh, 2013. So again, we're really going to, we're going to work very hard to expand the type of lesson plans that we can make available so that we have multiple offerings in different age categories. Uh, we're working already with the National PTA. We created a toolkit for them this year. Uh, they did distribute it statewide. Uh, there were quite a number of PTA chapters and organizations that used it to get parents and teachers involved in projects that were meant to help schools, meant to help classrooms, with 9-11 being the catalyst. Uh, we're also talking to donors choose about trying to create ways to support and provide grant funding to teachers that want to, um, you know, to post and organize 9-11 projects next year so that there's a way in which we can help them raise money for their classrooms with 9-11 being the focus. And then we're talking to AARP, which runs Experience Corps, 
to try to expand and promote mentoring in classrooms and try to have 9-11 to be next year to be a big mentoring day. 9-11 uh, in 2013 is on a Wednesday. Uh, the school year for many, you know, many, many districts will already sort of have been underway for a while. So we're hopeful that we can get even more teachers involved in participating this year. So that, that's the essence of the, the, you know, the program. Uh, it really is remarkable how much it's taking hold. This past year we had more than 100,000 page views to the Scholastic website alone. We had another 30 or 40,000 just to our website from teachers. Uh, and in total we had something like 40,000 um, teachers access and view our lesson plan. So we were really thrilled at the, the kind of support that we received and we're hoping that uh, with your help we'll expand it even more uh, in the future. So thank you so much for participating today and uh, I'm happy to, uh, uh, Marcus, if you're moderating uh, chat questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll stay online and answer the ones I can. Um, so I'm going to begin by, um, by taking a question here from Sarah. And she says, do you find that most teachers use 9-11 Day as a place to start service learning or a day to culminate service learning projects? <laughs> That's a wonderful question because our vision is that 9-11 that in, in the perfect world should be a, either a beginning or an end to a, to a longer term service learning initiative. So you should start something that's going to go for a few weeks or a few months. I mean, if you talk to groups like, you know, like Generation On or Youth Service America or other organizations, Hands On, uh, other groups, Points of Light Institute, other groups that really believe in promoting service learning uh, in schools, they talk about the importance of it lasting for a period of time and that it be essentially a semester of service learning. So for me, I personally think it would be best if you use 9-11 as an opportunity to kick something off um, so that, um, so that, you know, so that the, the lessons that the children learn uh, are not limited to just 9-11 itself. Now, that said, I mean, there are thousands of teachers that, that you know, that feel uh, or decide that they just want to do something on 9-11, and we don't want to discourage that. But it's always great when, um, when you can use 9-11 as a catalyst to either begin something or end something. You know, you could even set up a, a bookend it with, uh, with Make a Difference Day. So you could start uh, in September, uh, on September 11th or thereabouts, and then culminate it, um, you know, uh, on Make a Difference Day in October. Also, just another thing, you don't have to do it on 9-11. You can do it any time during that week. Uh, it's really entirely up to you. Okay? Um, uh, other questions? Go, go ahead and post them in the chat if you, uh, if you want me to go ahead and, uh, and uh, provide any additional background or clarify anything. Okay, so we got another one that says, um, so yeah, so do we have a guide on the, on the website to help teachers talk about 9-11? Um, I would say honestly to that, uh, we do, but I don't think it's as complete as it should be. Now, uh, there, um, the, interestingly enough, the, the, um, the PTA, the National PTA, did have a partnership last year with the American Psych Psychology Association to provide teachers with a little more direction about where to go. There are resources um, that are very helpful uh, for teachers um, to help them sort of better understand how to deal with and talk about 9-11. Obviously, it just depends upon the age of your students. Um, but, I, but it's a great question. It's something that we're absolutely going to add to our uh, offering this year. So thank you for that. And it just reminded me that I'm, I should have mentioned it um, in the context of the presentation. So I will. Uh, be, definitely be looking for it because we will have something that should be very, very helpful for you. 
Uh, another question uh, comes from Labricia. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing your name correctly. How do you find out about possible partners for the same initiative, same initiative or a local movement? Uh, also a great question. So uh, typically uh, when 9-11 rolls around, uh, the programs that happen are impl implemented on a local level. And uh, certainly I would be, number one, first, I would be talking to other teachers right away. I would try to get to them early enough and see what's going on in your own school and see whether or not you can collaborate with other teachers within your own community. Um, you could talk to the PTA about doing something jointly with them. That's not a bad idea. Now, some of the organizations that typically do things um, every 9-11 include um, the Points of Life Institute's hands-on affiliates. Now, they have close to 300 volunteer centers all around the country. Now, they don't all say hands-on. Like in New York, it's New York Cares. Uh, uh, in, in, in Washington, it's DC Cares. But then you have Hands-On Atlanta and others that are called hands-on. So you'd have to do a little homework to find out which volunteer center is you know, in your community. And talking to them early is a great idea because in all probability, they're going to either have something going on or they're going to know something that, um, about other partners that you can work with. We also find that a lot of faith organizations uh, are um, actively, actively involved in 9-11 as well. So it's, it's good to talk to some of the faith groups. And, and then cities too. Some, a lot of cities are organizing things and putting resources together. So I hope that's at least a, a, a good start. Um, Elizabeth asks, uh, uh, will there be a, a recorded version of the webinar? And the answer is yes, this is recorded. And I think Marcus can probably comment on exactly how that all works. But yes, uh, my understanding is these are recorded because a lot of people are busy, uh, they're teaching, and they come back and watch them later. So um, uh, Marcus, feel free to comment on that one. Um, so I don't see any. Uh, um, yeah, here's Marcus. So Marcus is indicating that you know they do store the recorded version of the webinar uh, in the Generator School Network, and he's, he's provided the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the URL for that, and the membership's free. Okay. Um, so with if there aren't any more questions, I want to thank everybody for um, uh, for um, joining with me today, and again, thank you so much for hosting this, Marcus, and your wonderful team. Very, very much appreciate uh, what you're all doing uh, at the Youth Leadership Center. It's just terrific. And um, I wish you all the best. Thank you.